Number five from the 2014 Advanced Tire. The only vectors question appears to be here. Just a little one for four marks. After that huge chapter you did. Well, what does it say? Calculate this. Now, either you recognise it or you don't. If you don't recognise it, you'll be doing the cross product of those two. And then the result of that, you'll be doing U scalar product with that. Or if you recognise that as the scalar triple product, you'd probably batter straight in with U, which is 5, 13, 0, V, which is 2, 1, 3, W, which is 1, 4, negative 1, and just evaluate that determinant. So that'll be using the top row. 5 times its minor here, which is 1, 3, 4, negative 1, but negative in this position, negative 13 times its minor, knocking out the own column, which is 2, 3, 1, negative 1. So that's going to be 5 times, now work out that little determinant, negative 1, take away 12, minus 13 times, negative 2, take away 3, and that's negative, doesn't matter what they come to, it's the same factors, negative 5 times 13 plus 5 times 13, which is 0. Or you may have worked out V cross W first of all. V cross W would be the same as this, only you would have I, J and K for the top row. So if you did that, you would have had V cross W equal to, I'll just put it in component form, because obviously it'll be these same two numbers, it would be a negative 13, but take away that, and then a 5, and if that was the K there, that would have been 8, take away 1, which would have been a 7. You'd have had that, and then you'd have done the scalar product of 5, 13, 0, dot, negative 13, 5, 7, to give you exactly the same result, to give you a 0. Interpret your result geometrically. Well, there's all sorts of things you could say. You could say that this here, this scalar, notice this is just a single number here, this scalar represents the volume of the parallelepiped formed by those three vectors, by V, W and U. If you continue that to form a squinty rectangle, uh, sorry, cuboid, a parallelepiped. Well, if the volume is zero, that parallelepiped must be degenerate, in other words, it must be just be lying flat out, which means that U, V and W are all coplanar. But they've mentioned OA, OB and OC. So does that mean that you could say that OA, B and C all lie in the same plane? I'll put that down first of all. From that, you can say that U, V and W lie in the same plane. Or, if you like, O, A, B and C are coplanar. Or not put those wee brackets in and just say that. If you've done it through this route, remember that was U dot V cross W, then I suppose the conclusion would be you'd then say, well that means that U was perpendicular to V cross W because the scalar product came to zero. And if it's perpendicular to that, that must mean it's perpendicular to the normal. It takes longer to write it out this way. That means U is perpendicular to the normal, to the plane containing U and, sorry, V and W. And if it's perpendicular to the normal, it must lie in the plane. And then you can say the same thing. Then it would just lead on to this one here.